gold standard of treatment for symptomatic gold stones is laparoscopic cholecystectomy. For some patients that may not be an option because of health concerns or because they cannot get the treatment or do not wish that treatment. So let's look at some other options for such patients. In this talk, we will look at very briefly at prevention of gold stones, what to do if gold stones are found but do not cause symptoms, how to avoid having a gold stone pain attack, uh, what non-surgical strategies are there for gold stones, and finally, uh, we'll briefly talk about if you have an intact gallbladder and by whatever means we have removed the gallstones, what happens then? So uh, factors that have been shown to be protective against gallstones are these. Um, those who take vitamin C or nuts or coffee, vegetable proteins have a low risk of having gallstones. Physical activity, having a good diet, healthy weight, uh, and finally, the use of bile acid pill, which I'll come back to later, again would reduce the risk of having gallstones. Now, this is not written in stone. You may do all of this and still get gallstones, so it's just that the risk is reduced. What about silent stones? So you went in and had a scan for some other indication and then you were told you had gallstones. What should you do? No treatment. Uh, please do not allow any uh, doctor or surgeon to tell you that if you have gallstones they have to come out, they don't, unless they cause symptoms or cause complications. Can we avoid having a gallstone pain attack? We can't totally avoid it, but certainly the frequency of such attacks can be reduced and for some patients this can be quite effective. So these are the strategies that can reduce uh, such attacks. In this diagram we can see that the arrival of food in the stomach causes a strong stimulus for the gallbladder to contract and if it has stones then a stone can get stuck. And it's really important to understand as has been discussed before in the previous video that if there is fat content then the stimulus is very strong. So those with gallstones are best advised to avoid fatty food and to avoid dairy products. Over here we can see that if the patients get sick or vomit the food out then that gets rid of the stimulus and a lot of the patients would feel that their pain has improved. Now um, the other strategies, uh, the, the prime one is the bile acid pill and the name is ursodiol or ursodeoxycholic acid. You take a tablet and it gets absorbed in the bile and it breaks down uh, breaks down the gold stones. It isn't very successful uh, but even if it's not successful it is known to reduce the symptoms associated with gold stones i.e. reduce the frequency of biliary colic. If you stop the treatment for whatever reason then gold stones tend to come back in a period of time and it does require uh, certain conditions to be met. The biopill does not work for everyone and there has to be certain conditions which are met otherwise it's not effective. So let's look at those and what it means. So the gallstones, there you can see the gallbladder, there's a picture that I've shown before. So it's the gallbladder with gallstones in it. The gallstones have to be smaller than one centimeter, so larger gallstones would not get dissolved with this treatment. The, the gallstones should not have any calcium content or that should be quite low. And these gallstones should be made out of cholesterol mainly. Now there are several different types of gallstones and this pill would work only on cholesterol stones which to be fair are the most common types of stones. So the cystic duct has to be patented by which we mean that this tube that connects the gallbladder to the bile duct it has to be open. In some patients this is blocked and in those patients this treatment would not work. And finally the gallbladder concentrates bile in some patients that function is lost and yet again in those patients uh, this treatment is not going to work very well. What other treatments are there? Now uh, gallstones can be removed through the skin, let's look at that. In very sick patients sometimes a tube is inserted into the gallbladder to drain the gallbladder if it is full of uh, pus uh, or infected material. That tube can then be left for a, for a period of time and you can see over here that this figure demonstrates a tube which is now fitted into the gallbladder that is a gallstone. 
Over time, that track is dilated, and then finally, uh, a mechanism is devised to grasp the stone and to take it out through the skin. Now, this is not a common way of treating it, and it is only reserved for selected patients who are very sick and cannot undergo surgery for the gallbladder. What about other therapies uh, that have been tried but not shown to be hugely effective? Uh, we will look at that in some detail now. In this picture we can see how ESWL, extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy works. Basically shockwaves are passed from patient's skin from the outside which then impact on the cold stones which are inside the gallbladder causing them to disintegrate. The broken down stones then pass through the gallbladder and the tube that connects it to the bile duct. They get into the bile duct and they come out into the bowel. At least in theory that is how it's meant to work. The same would apply for any other treatment, alternative treatment that relies on contracting of the gallbladder so that the gallstones could come out. Now that is a problem. If these fragments are too big they would not leave the gallbladder but even smaller fragments may sometimes cause complications within the main bowel tube such as pain, jaundice, infection and very rarely they can set off about a pancreatitis. There are other alternative medical therapies and Chinese medicine and so on. There isn't a great deal of literature about these and it is not clear how they act or whether or not this is a long-term solution for many patients. In my very limited experience, those who've tried alternative medicine or, or Chinese traditional Chinese medicine therapies, uh, they report initial success, but often the gallstones come back. And I'm not too certain about the mechanism of action of these treatments. So, finally, in summing up, uh, we should all lower our risk of having gallstones by leading a healthy lifestyle. If you have gallstones that are causing symptoms, uh, one should try and seek an early operation. Whilst awaiting an operation, or if you cannot have the operation, then you should avoid fatty food and egg products. The bilacid pill may be useful for some, not all. Uh, and these things have been discussed already. When you stop the treatment, the gallstones tend to, tend to come back. Now, rarely gallstones may be removed to the skin, but this is not available or indicated widely. And this is only for sick patients who've had a gallbladder attack with infection in whom a, a tube has been inserted and some, in some patients may be suitable for this treatment. Now, gallstones tend to come back if the gallbladder is not removed, whatever treatment option is deployed. That's the end of the talk. Thank you. Thank you.